Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video and today we're going to look at my competition pieces for the upcoming capital palette at the Nova Open. I'm really excited about this competition and I want to share my stuff with you. So let's get into it. Uh, the strict technomancer that is Vinci V. Let us get to the technique and learn it Vinci V. Each year on Labor Day weekend in, well, pretty near, now directly in Washington, D.C., the Nova happens. Nova Open. It's a big gaming convention. Now, uh, it was called Nova because Northern Virginia, it used to be in a different place, now it's moved into D.C. proper. Uh, at Nova, there is a really, really wonderful painting competition called the Capital Palette. I've been participating in this now for, I think, eight years? That sounds about right. Uh, and it's really a truly amazing experience, something I look forward to every year. If you're looking to participate in painting competitions and you can make your way to Nova to the DC area on that Labor Day weekend, it is the preeminent uh, miniature painting competition in the US I would recommend you participate in. And the reason for that is because it's an open system. There are three different levels. Uh, apprentice, journeyman, and master. So no matter where you are on your hobby journey, uh, you can have your competition pieces submitted. You can potentially win medals. Remember, it's open, so there are multiple, potentially multiple, golds, silvers, and bronzes. You're not competing against anyone but yourself, effectively. And uh, the, 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 the because of the tiered nature of it, there's always a home for everybody, no matter what their skill level is. I've been honored to be able to judge uh, the apprentice category for the past three, four years. I don't know how long I've been doing it now, but I love it. It's something I look forward to. Uh, it is just an amazing competition. The judges spend a lot of time. I know I do. I know all the judges do after the competition, giving feedback to all of the participants. It's very transparent. And really, it's been nothing but a positive experience that has helped me grow year over year. So... With that out of the way, I want to share with you the pieces I'm taking to the Nova Open this year. First up, we're going to start in sort of the large or large scale category. And I got two different entries I'm going to be bringing. The first of which is my Nurgle sister. Now, you've seen this in some videos before, but here's where she looks like after all of my current changes. Uh, realistically, there's probably still more I will do with her, potentially, before the actual competition. But I like where she's at right now. I'll say, with all of these things, if you see anything that you think would be a good change, I welcome all of your feedback, so drop them down in the comments below. Feedback is always essential, and I welcome it all. This miniature went on quite a journey. I started showing how I painted the gold, and then really wasn't happy with it, and it didn't work. I went through several rounds of feedback with friends, and again, feedback is so important, changed things, reshaped things, retoned, switched the background. I did a lot of work on this one. And overall, there's still some things I feel like I want to change with it. But what I'm really proud of here is stuff like the armor. I think the face really came out nice. It looks stark, and uh, I managed to subtract just the right amount of life from it to make her look like she's a living being, but feels very dead. Uh, so I think I hit the right thing there. That's I'm proud of. The armor and the armor tone and the desaturated nature of it, I think, came out all right. And I think the fire glow really sells. I managed to get sort of, I hope, the right balance in there of having that fire against the rest of the miniature. It's always tough when you're balancing those sort of motivated lightings across the panoply of different surfaces and textures and uh, that are on a miniature like this. But overall, I was pretty happy with how this came out. If you're curious, this sister comes from Hardcore Miniatures. It's 75 millimeters. Uh, it was just a lot of fun to paint. And so I, I'm very interested to hear what the judges think of this one and hopefully give me some feedback to continue improving it. A figure like this was really something that I set myself down for as a certain bar I wanted to reach. I'm not sure if I cleared it, but I know I certainly tried, and in trying, I know that did help me grow. Really, whether or not you reach the goal or you clear the bar you wanted with quality, simply attempting to achieve it will help you grow and learn and advance in your hobby journey, and so for that, I'm very thankful with this piece. The next piece up is my uh, the, the piece from Mindworks. This is part of their Kickstarter. Um, this is from the most recent Braum launch that they did. I really love this piece. I think it's called like Tempest or something at the original art. I'm sorry, I don't know the piece from, from I know the piece, I just don't know the name of the piece from Braum. Um, at any rate, 
I really liked painting this. This also showed up in a video, uh, so if you want to see how I did any of the uh, skin and stuff like that, uh, you can see that in a video on display painting with skin. I actually did a two-part on this one. And in fact, that is the thing that I think came out the best here. I really do like the tones and the subtle colors, the richness I managed to get in the skin. A lot of that was glazing with uh, Speed Paint 2.0. Uh, and I really do find that to be an exceptionally great tool for adding those very thin filters that bring a lot of rich yellows, reds, purples, greens, and all of that stuff that both uh, emulates the original Brahm art, which is so rich with various hues, but also uh, just making it feel more credible like real skin and a real person that exists in the world. Uh, I was also pretty happy with how the sort of transparent cloth came out, both on the light side and the shadowed side. There's some difference to how much uh, actual skin is showing through there. And I think I managed to basically get that subtlety where I wanted. Uh, overall, I think this piece came out uh, okay. I'm not, there's, there's some elements of it I'm not super thrilled on, uh, but for the most part, I think it came out pretty decent. All right, now let's go ahead and move into busts. So here I've got three busts for you. The first one is Shiv. Um, this is from uh, Neko Galaxy from their Inu Kingdoms line. Uh, I've wanted to paint this thing forever. I love this bust. I think it's exceptional. It just blows me away. Um, it's simple. It, you might even call it like an academic bust, possibly. I don't know. I don't care. Certain things just really grab me, and this was one of them. Um, paint what you love is always my best advice. And I really wanted to make her just saturated in neon and synth wave. I wanted to sort of soften the emotion in her and really make her eyes alive and expressive. And I do think that was the thing I was most successful with here. This also plays with lighting. It has obviously the strong motivated blue light. Uh, I think that came out okay. Uh, but ultimately, the part that I'm most pleased with is everything around sort of the lit side of her face and her eyes and the emotion she's conveying. I spent a lot of time, uh, many, many, many hours on just her eyeballs. And I think that that came out well because it, it I, I think I managed to achieve sort of something here with those eyes that I really haven't before and that it actually feels like you're looking into a living being's eyes. Um, and so I was really pleased with this. Um, it was a very fun thing to do. I love the, I love doing like pink hair and, you know, blue lights and stuff like that. I love the synth wave color scheme. Obviously this plays around in a bunch of saturated tones that I love. So, uh, this was just great fun from top to bottom. No doubt about it. Next up is this pirate bust, uh, from, uh, Big Child. Um, I think her name's like Elena or something. I don't remember, but she's from Big Child Creatives. You can find her. And... This was part of a uh, hobby hangout that I did with Sam Lenz and John Ninas. I made a video all about this as well. Uh, and, you know, where over the weekend we got together and we all basically painted the same figure in different ways. Ultimately, I think Sam's came out better than mine, although a very different interpretation. Uh, I mean, that's not saying much. Sam Lenz is a better painter than I am, uh, so it's not really surprising that he would do a better job. Uh, but I really loved his, but I was really happy with how this one came out. Whereas the last bus was super saturated and intense, this is very desaturated. Uh, other than some of the copper, which is still fairly rich, but for the most part, a lot of the figures really, I sapped a lot of the life out of it, made it feel very dead. Um, I'm really happy with the, the thing that, that I was like most thrilled with here, is if you look very closely at her, you will see these scratches and tears in her skin. If you look at the front of her hand that's gesturing, uh, you'll see that you can see like the bones of her, uh, uh, what it would it be, carpal, carpal bones, metacarpals? I don't know, whatever, her, her hand, the back of her hand bones. Uh, and there's no actual holes or anything like that in the sculpt. That's all 100% done through paint, effectively freehanding torn skin, exposed muscle, exposed bone, all of those kinds of things. Little tiny blood rivulets running out, but not a lot because she's dead, so she's not going to bleed much. And I just, I really loved it. I don't know what made me originally want to do the zombie version of this. I, didn't, I haven't really, I'm sure somebody's done it, but I hadn't really seen anybody do a zombie version of it. Um, it just seemed like a really cool, unique interpretation. And one of the challenges I usually have with painting is, is inspiration. I really do find it tough to bring my own sensibilities or a creative idea to most things I paint, I'll be honest. 
I am a technomancer. I'm not very creative. I've never felt like an artist. And so with this piece, I felt more like an artist. The inspiration struck and it hit. And then doing that joint project where I was painting together, it was a really fulfilling experience and just something I am very, very proud of. And um, I just, I love painting it. I don't know what else to say. That The bust is great. It's top quality. Uh, and it was just a tremendous amount of fun to do. Uh, next up is uh, a miniature from Journeyman Miniatures. This is uh, Shinobi. Uh, so the Shinobi was something that I wanted to paint for a long time since it came out. Uh, I really love this idea. I uh, am sort of a big uh, Japanophile and stuff like that. So uh, the idea of had like the Shinobi lady, she just looked really cool. I loved everything about her. The unique challenge I gave myself here was not really with the, I mean, yes, there's sort of the dual lighting source, but that's fine. That's not really that complicated. The actual challenge I wanted to give to myself was to paint a figure where the face is in shadow and darkened. And that's actually really hard. Now, in movies and film and photography, you'll see people use this effect all the time. Like a main character will come on screen and their face will be only partially lit on the side with most of their face cast in deep shadow. They'll do this for hero reveals or villain reveals or anything like that. Anytime you get somebody important, they'll kind of, you know, think of Captain America stepping out of the shadows in, uh, I don't know, Endgame or whatever, the Infinity War, whatever the first one was. I don't even remember anymore. But they, this happens a lot. And, but it's really hard to do in miniature painting because the face is where people naturally look. If you just leave it in super deep shadow, it's not going to be very compelling. So striking the right balance here was really very important to me. I also wanted to show that she could like see in the dark, that she, her, her eyes were like gleaming and had a shine. So, and that would also help pop some, bring some light back. So I, I like brought this sort of yellow orange glow to her irises that I think really stands out against the dark face. All in all, that part of it, which was my main focus, I think came out pretty well. There are elements of this I don't love as much. I think I could do a little better with the blue light. The cast here isn't doesn't feel quite as credible as it did on like Shiv. Uh, I the gold is probably way too rich for the the amount of light she's in. There are things that I would go back and change. But overall, it was a very fun experiment to do that really unique lighting scheme to have a facial a facial shadow uh, light, and it taught me a lot for what I want to do in the future. The last model I'm going to take you through here today is my big Nurgle knight. Now, this is 40k, well, I guess technically it's a Horus Heresy, so 30k knight, whatever. I'm sure there's still a few of them walking around, right? I mean, they're big machines. Um, but this is my Nurgle knight. So Nurgle was one of the uh, Chaos Gods I hadn't done a night for yet, and so this one I made a couple videos out of. Uh, you can check those out. Uh, this one was so much fun. I really love how this night came out. This let me just explore, the, again, that sort of very desaturated color palette. I really like working with Nurgle in the white tones with just like using the green as the pop as opposed to all green. I really don't favor the sort of yellow green that 40k Nurgle stuff is done in. I'm much more like the Death Guard era, uh, white, kind of whitish with a tint of green to it. Uh, the Horus Heresy era Nurgle stuff really catches me. And this is a great chance to play with things being damaged and scratched and rusted and verdigreed and all of that. And I really enjoyed this guy and how he came out. Doing these big nights is always a massive project. This guy was more than 200, 250 hours. I don't know, something like that. I mean, it's, you know, many, many weeks of work. But uh, doing it was just an absolute joy. I really love painting these nights. I try to do at least one a year. I really can't do more than that, given the amount of time they take. You know, there's only like 2,000 working hours in a year, and that's if you're doing it as a full-time job. Obviously, I have to like make videos and do my normal job and stuff too. Um, so the, but this was just really, really fun to paint. And every year I find I'm able to push myself a little more and do something more interesting. For this one, I really like how the sort of carapace came out, the small freehand details. I looked up a lot of interesting Nurgle symbols and uh, to draw on for, for inspiration. And all in all, I'm really happy with how this guy came out. I think it's probably the best night I've done. And I've done a lot of big competition nights. But this one was my favorite, so I don't know. I guess in the end, 
I love Nurgle after all. You win, Grandfather. You win. So there you go. There's my six pieces for Capital Palette. Uh, I'm pretty excited about them. I'm, I'm very much looking forward to what the judges say. I don't have any expectations for, for winning anything. I never do. I hope I do, of course. I try to compete hard, but the competition at Capital Palette, the master category, it, the level is, it's really high. And so anything I tend to get, I am generally overjoyed about. What I really want, look, I'm looking forward to more than anything is spending a nice long weekend looking at everybody's their awesome submissions, being able to see their pieces, uh, hanging out with everybody, hanging out with my fellow artists, just talking about the hobby and miniature painting, and just having a great time uh, sharing this hobby that we all love so much. It's something I look forward to every single year, and hopefully I see you there. If you're coming to Nova and you see me, stop me, say hi. If you're putting something in there, uh, it's in the apprentice category, I'll get to judge it, so I look forward to that. But otherwise, you know, show me your piece. Uh, I'd love to see it. Uh, it's always exciting looking at everybody else's painted miniatures because that's why we do this. It's really great. So thank you so much for watching this one. Tell me down below any feedback you have for any of my pieces, as well as maybe which one was your favorite. What did you like or didn't like about them? Uh, as always, all feedback is welcome. I always read every question and comment you've got, so drop those down below. Give it a like, subscribe, click things that make dings. It's really helpful to the channel. If you want to support the channel, not only you can do all those free things, you can also find a bunch of affiliate links down below for your hobby supplies. They don't cost you anything extra. In fact, it usually saves you money, and it's a great way to give back to the channel. There's also our merch store down there. There's the games that I produce with Uncle Adam if you're looking for your next skirmish game obsession. And of course, there's our Patreon, focused on review and feedback and taking your next step on your hobby journey. As always, though, I thank you so much for watching this one, and we'll see you next time.